Today I'm taking two popular video ideas, NBA imperialism and players on their hometown teams, and I'm smacking them together. Come on, yeah, bro. I'm smacking. I've created a roster that places NBA players on their hometown team. For each player, I use their listed birthplace on basketball reference, so if there's any mistakes or confusion, blame them and not me. For teams located in states that have just a few players, well, that's just tough luck. The Wizards, for example, have Kevin Durant and basically nothing else. 50 overall players will be used to fill out the more sparse roster. Rosters. When a team wins a matchup, they obviously capture new territory on our map as well they get to add one free agent. As you can see, I've dropped international players into free agency as well American stars born outside of the 30 regions represented by NBA teams. Now when a team wins, they don't just have their pick of the crop. All free agent acquisitions are controlled by a random number generator between 1 and 30. Whatever number gets landed on, the winning team takes the corresponding player from the free agent pool. And one final thing, I've added 8 dudes who are the best player from states that don't have a hometown team. If a team attacks through their state, that player is immediately up for grabs to whichever team wins the game. All right, we all good? Great. And who will our first victim or successor, who will our first team be? Oh my gosh, the LA Lakers, of course. That's just crazy because the Lakers obviously one of the better teams being in LA and they're going south, okay. As you can see, I've equally split up the state of California and of course we're starting this video with a battle of LA. This is also already a good opportunity for me to say that the states that have multiple teams in it like New York, California, Texas, if a player was born specifically in the region or the area of which a team is located like Dallas or Sacramento, they're obviously on that team. But elsewhere, I did just have to use my judgment and put players on different teams, balance them out a bit. I hope y'all are cool with that. For example, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, Russell Westbrook, Norm Powell, all these guys born in LA. I put them on the Clippers because, well, they play for the Clippers, duh. While James Harden, DeMar DeRozan, Clay Thompson, I put on the Lakers so we could have two balanced LA teams. It's unfortunately not perfect science. But once again, I ask, are we good? Okay, let's move on. Well, I guess I balanced the LA rosters pretty well. It's a five point game, two minutes left. All the Lakers got to do, get some good shots and they close this game out. That is not a good look, Damar. You went right into trap. Oh no, Kawhi's about to force up some BS, isn't he? Oh, he almost turned the ball. <gasps> did he turn? No, he didn't turn the ball over, but he did force up some BS and that's probably game right there. Damar DeRozan, James Harden, Christian Wood, they win the first battle while well, the only battle of LA. Look at Evan Mobley trying to lead the way for the Clippers. And the very first move on our board, of course, the Lakers claiming a bit more of California. Which free agent do they claim though? Let's see. Le okay, well, that's uh, unfortunate for LA. Y'all are just gonna have to trust my counting, but boy, on Bogdanovich, free agent number 28 on the list. And with our first team eliminated, we do move on to game two. Let's go. The Washington Wizards. Okay. The Wizards are going to be in tough, as I showed in the intro. Basically, just Kevin Durant and a bunch of 50s. Looks like the Wizards will be taking on the 76ers. And yes, I'm smart enough to be aware that this is not DC, but also I'm Canadian and that whole thing confuses me. So I, I might have just called them Delaware. Who knows, Brad? Whatever state I generously gave the Wizards to, they've got Kevin Durant, Luca Garza, Frank Jackson, and literally nothing else. The Sixers, meanwhile, I kind of thought they'd be better. They're solid though. Mikel Bridges, uh, Bubble Butt, Lowry really falling off. Kevin Durant indeed had a massive individual performance, but unsurprisingly, uh, yeah, wasn't enough for his Wizards, although they only lost by 21. And Philadelphia overtakes uh, Delaware, Mary, whatever state that is that I had the Wizards in. On top of geography, I have to do all this counting and math in this video as the Wizards or the 76ers get the 25th free agent. None of the premier names getting picked off the board yet, but Michael Porter Jr. solid. Game three, we'd visit Texas. Texas for the first time with the Spurs heading west, slightly north, right into Arizona for the Suns. I gave the Spurs four Texan-born players, Trey Young, Royce O'Neal, Toreen Prince, and Wesley Matthews, but that's it. While the Suns have a surprisingly weak team, Marv Bagley, Matisse Thibel, yeah, it's not deep. Brad, these two rosters pretty weak on paper, but they're battling to the death. You already know Trey's gonna pull up. It's gonna be, oh, he passed it. That's actually a good look. <laughs> nah, you, what? Toreen Prince hit an early? I thought he was missing that by a mile. Nah, the Suns are really feeding Marv inside. That's hilarious. And that's a clutch. Hoop. Once again, the pressure shifts back to Trey Young. He's got, okay, he's shooting this one. Nobody in the corner. Wide open. Look, Trey. Oh, Trey bricked it in the clutch. Oh my gosh. Okay. I, I can't hate on Trey Young. My man put up 53 points, tried to backpack. It just didn't work. I'm not going to flame Trey Young for missing a clutch shot. He played great, but his Spurs do lose a big part of Texas now. In addition to gaining part of Texas, the Suns would also get the 12th 
free agent, which was Carl Anthony Towns, a nice little addition for their roster. In game four, the wheel would offer us up the 76ers for their second matchup, sending them Northwest, which I believe is into Michigan and the Pistons. The Pistons sporting arguably a top five roster in this challenge led by Devin Booker, Draymond Green. Well, top five roster, my eye. Are you serious? These boys from Philly are cooking. Philly's Northeast territory continues to develop. And they'd also get the first clutch addition from the free agent pool. There's obviously a top tier of 97 overalls, but Pascal is cool. By virtue of the wheel landing on Brooklyn, sending them Southwest, we'd have the 76ers back up for another game. And I'm saying that this game puts Jalen Brunson from New Jersey on the line. It's the closest matchup we're going to get to going through, Joy -Z. So let's do it. Can the 76ers win their third game and add Jalen Brunson already? I can't lie. Their road is looking pretty easy because this Nets roster did not turn out very well. Uh-oh, Brooklyn hooping. Look out, Philly. Wait, it feels like Philly has part of their bench rotation out here too right now. Oh, that's a big shot. DeAndre Hunter. Melo inside. He's got space and he's got the finish. Yeah, Melo just deed up. Melo just deed up and they got the board. Wow. Wait, Jose Alvarado in the clutch. Off to Thomas Bryant. Oh, what a play. Oh my gosh. No, 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 no. One rebound. Oh, they did it. They did it. Philly choke. Terrence Mann hit a couple clutch free throws, meaning Philly was on their last leg. DeAndre Hunter is chucking in the clutch. Why would he do that? That's got to be game. That was a twofold upset for the Nets who overtake all of Philly's region as well. They claim Jalen Brunson from that New Jersey spot, which is huge because along with getting the 14th best free agent, which is DeJounte Murray, 84 overall, the Nets do add Jalen Brunson and they've got a new big two. Their roster really needed it as well. We'd finally take a break from the Northeastern USA and we'd land on Miami, sending them Northwest, which was all the way over to the Pelicans territory. Miami doesn't have a deep team, but they are led by Scotty Barnes and Fernie Simons and uh, Udonis Haslam, of course. Then boys from Louisiana looking pretty good. Clutch player of the year, De'Aaron Fox, Bob Williams, Kelly Oubre. Oh, we got a battle battle here. Three point game. Scotty, kick it out. Scotty, kick it. Never mind, Scotty. Just do the Can layup. Scotty get him another bucket here in the clutch? He's got the mismatch. That's too easy. Scotty's just too darn big. De'Aaron's got to get something here for the Pels. They're kind of flat. Oh, okay. Udonis, where were you going? I think we're using up all the clutch baskets in this video in this one game, but do we have another Scotty? Oh, nah. Oh, nah. Haslam. <laughs> Who does Haslam think he is? The Pels would take over Miami. Unfortunately, they didn't get blessed with a great free agent. It's Bobby Portis who saw it. Our wheel would finally take us back to the western part of our map, Utah. And they're heading right into Denver. Ironically, both Utah and Denver were our least populated teams. We've got two players on the Jazz. And we've got just two players on the Nuggets. Okay. And let me tell you, I am shocked. It's Utah with John Collins and Sam Merrill. Oh, John Collins is a beast. John cut 28 and 30. 39 rebounds. That is now a whole lot of real estate for just two people in Utah, but actually soon to be three because we get to generate a number. Will it be some, what? Can I get like a top five number here, Google? What are we doing? I mean, at least John Collins gets a point guard. Anyways, we are making progress on our wheel despite not getting any good free agents. We're into Houston. Do the Rockets have to play another Texas team or are they making their way out? Southwest, Southeast. I've made 30,000 of these videos. I still don't know directions. Houston, Pelicans. The Rockets aren't that deep, but they do have Vanderbilt, Quentin Grimes, Alex Caruso, and hopefully playoff Jimmy Butler. Oof, playoff Jimmy? Nah, nah, that was more like way off Jimmy Butler. Get, get it? Because he missed like a lot of shots. Oh, and the Pelicans cruise to an easy victory, their second of the video. Disappointment from Jimmy, but the Pelicans continue to develop. And there it is. Oh my gosh, it finally happened. I don't know why the wheel decided to clutch up now and give us number one, but of course it is Luka Doncic atop the heap as a 97 over. Overall. Following the Pels' big move, we'd land on Minnesota for the first time, sending them east right into Wisconsin for the Bucks. And the Timberwolves actually have a pretty interesting team. Tyus, Trey Jones, Jericho Sims. Not a lot of star power, but some depth. Milwaukee, though, they might be cooking. Brad Tyrese, Halliburton, Jordan Poole, Tyler here. There's going to be no defense, no perimeter defense, but they got talent. And this was not a blowout by any means, but uh, well, 21 points is kind of... Milwaukee was the better team. We knew this. Unfortunately, the Bucks would get the 29th free agent, which was Jalen Durant. Ran, not a bad player, but not elite, obviously. Our wheel would take us back to the West Coast, California. Golden State heading southeast. You know what that means, baby. Dame Lillard and the boys from the Bay. Not much depth, a lot of talent versus the LA Lakers who have, well, everything, of course. I guess you don't need to be deep when you've got heart. Look at the Bay boys, baby. Tie game. Unfortunately, James Harden wasn't interested in hearing about the Bay. He hit a clutch three to put the Lakers back up. For some reason, the Lakers do not have James Harden on the floor. He's not fouled out or anything. They're just making this 
his choice, I guess. Lamelo Ball in the corner. He bricked it. Big Brook Lopez rebound. This Golden State roster has literally no size. They don't have a real center on the roster. And Dame bricked a lay. What? Wow. A hoop right here will put things away for Golden State. No chance. I just saw Klay Thompson blow by Aaron Gordon. LA was obviously one of the favorites coming into this video, and they've almost captured all of California. And the rest of the league better pray the Lakers. Don't. What if they got like Giannis or something accidentally on a generate? Let me click again. 20. Thank goodness. Wow. Jonas Valanciunas actually a really nice addition for them. Gives them a backup big behind Brooke. Next up, we'd have the debut of the Boston Celtics, who'd be heading southwest to take on the expanding Brooklyn Nets. Boston's roster, honestly, not so great. I don't expect big things, especially against the Nets, who, of course, just added Jalen Brunson and DeJounte Murray. Welcome to Brooklyn. And wow, what in the world? Okay, first time, I think, in this video, I'm genuinely shocked. The Celtics are about to win. How did they Darius Baisley 26, George Niang? I mean, they're just a bunch of grinders from Boston. They worked down by the Haba. What did you expect? That win meant Boston was now just a few stops away from truly owning the Northeast USA. And do they also get blessed with a fire free agent upgrade? We are due for one here, like a good high nut. No, 17. Okay, then. Interesting. Paulo Bancaro. I mean, he's going to help the team, obviously. That's that's nice. We'd have a very interesting development in game 12 as we finally landed on a dark horse favorite. The Charlotte Hornets sent them slightly northwest, which was not only right back into Boston's territory, but also put up Keldon Johnson as a reward for the winner. And there is no excuses for this Hornets team. Zion, B.I., Brandon Ingram, CP3. Come on. Like, this should be an easy victory. Uh, I, I, <clears throat> I, I don't know. Boston, Boston lost. Dang, Paulo was a great addition for them. Just wasn't enough. The northeast of the U.S. changes hands once again. It's now Charlotte's territory. And the Hornets also add Keldon Johnson, who was the best player from Virginia on our map. Additionally, do the Hornets add a marquee free agent? This would be deadly, Brad. This would be deadly. Wow. It's literally all in the luck of the random number generator. Our second 97 overall free agent. The first one went to New Orleans. This one to Charlotte. And we've officially got a brand new front runner. I don't, who is going to beat this team? Our next spin would land us in Memphis, sending them south, which was to the tip of Orlando. Neither team very good on paper, if I'm being honest. No depth, no star power either. And it would be the Magic who'd hold on, outlast the Grizz. Okay. Mitchell Robinson outplayed James Wiseman, and that was the difference. The Magic get a nice little chunk of real estate, but not a good free agent role, unfortunately. Mike Conley, I mean, I guess he'll help. And we'd stay in the southeast region of the U.S., landing on Atlanta, but sending them west into the Pelicans territory. I'm not going to lie to you all. ATL, the Hawks, they look really nice. Jalen Brown, Ant Edwards, Walker, Kessler, they, they have a great roster. Oh, but remember, this is Luka's debut for the Pels. This is a heavyweight matchup, man. This is huge for whoever loses. And despite the power of Luka, we're almost in miracle territory, as in the Pelicans need one down seven. The Hawks go to Ant Edwards in the clutch. Luka with the D. Oh, he didn't get the re, though. He didn't get the re. The D is ineffective if you don't get the re, my guy. And there you go. Luka Doncic doesn't help the Pelicans enough. Oof. Oh, he choked, actually. Yeah, 18, 10, and 7 is cool, but 4 of 19 from the field. The Hawks team, a balanced, dominant force. Look out, USA. A big win for the dominant Hawks who take over the Pels territory, which does include the tip of Florida. I almost forgot. Thankfully for the rest of the map, though, they only got the 30th free agent. That's tough. Chris Boucher on the team. The wheel would send us back to California to LA, sending them northeast, which is interesting because it's into the territory of the Utah Jazz, also crossing over Zach Collins, the best player from Nevada. I know it's not great, but Nevada is such a big state. I had to put someone's face there. And yeah, I forgot uh, Utah was very not good. Yeah, the Lakers won with ease. The Lakers take over the state of Utah and Colorado also grab Zach Collins. Once again, I'm very nervous for the rest of the map. If the Lakers, what if they got Giannis right here or somebody? <laughs> I, I promise I just did that live. I could not. They're... What? Y'all are going to accuse me of rigging this. I did it live because I wanted to react just in case that happened to the... Yeah, they just got Giannis. Speaking of the favorite Atlanta Hawks, after the wheel landed on the Magic and sent them southeast, we'd see Atlanta up again. And no drama here, as it was another easy Hawks victory. We saw that coming. In the blink of an eye, Atlanta now owns just, like, everywhere there in the southeast U.S. Unfortunately, an uninspiring free agent addition. It would be Buddy Heal. We weren't done with the Hawks, however, as the wheel would land on Indiana 
Indiana for the first time, send them southeast through Kentucky into Hawks territory, meaning yes, D'Angelo Russell up for grabs. Indiana has a pretty good looking lineup. Darius Garland, Desmond Bain, Jaden Ivey, but I don't know about them trying these Hawks, brother. I did have a feeling the Pacers from Indiana would be scrappy, though they're down six still in this game. Does Jalen have the ice in his veins to put this game away? Working on Eric Gordon. Nope, that is a terrible look, but he got the board. Dude, you pow. How do you let him get that rebound? The Pacers got packed up as Atlanta expanded again. They were again not blessed by the RNG. At uh, 20, they'd pick up Steven Adams. Not bad. Our wheel would invite Portland to the stage for the first time, sending them southwest into Sacramento territory. And because we're probably not going to get a closer matchup than this for this video, I'm putting up Zach Levine for the winner of this game. Let's do it. The Kings are in tough, man. I couldn't find enough California players from that area. Yeah, they could use a Zach Levine. This is going to be ugly. Pretty much a freebie for the Trailblazers, who are actually pretty good on paper, and they should be adding Zach Levine now, too. Honestly, I can admit it. I can admit that I did the Sacramento Kings dirty. Not sure what else I was supposed to do, but yeah, they ain't lighting the beam right now. Sorry, friends. It's possible I did bless the Blazers too much because they do claim Zach Levine from the state of Washington, and they've got some of the West Coast. This one wasn't as severe, though. I mean, Lori Markkinen, though, very cool. We are down to just 12 teams left on our wheel. I cannot believe it as another first timer here. OKC. What direction is Oklahoma City going? I can't remember. Who's around Oklahoma? Okay, south, uh, Southwest. Mm, looks like we got two first timers. OKC into Texas to face the Mavs. Uh, yeah, OKC. I forgot. They don't really got a good team. Old man Blake Griffin, though. And the Mavs with our distribution of Texas players did end up with a pretty good club. Uh, Tyrese Maxey, Cade. Yeah, they should win this one. And yeah, yeah, they did. They, they won pr pretty easily there. The Mavs with a nice little debut taking over Oklahoma. Also getting not a great free agent acquisition. Number 25, it's Herb Jones. And the wheel would actually kick us right back to Dallas. The compass sent them west, which means Phoenix is up. But if you recall, Phoenix's roster was pretty uninspiring despite having won a game and added Carl Anthony Towns. And that was reflective in the final score of this game with Dallas winning easily. The Mavs grab Arizona and are so close to owning all of Texas too. They'd also get a super fine addition landing on the fifth free agent, which is Bradley Beal. Not too bad. The wheel would finally send us to the Great White North. We've got the Raptors heading southeast into the New York Knicks territory. We see them for the first time. Even though Canada is a ginormous mass of land, I did the annoying thing and put all Canadians together on one team in Toronto. And also because I felt I had to put Donovan Mitchell on the Knicks, this New York team, they are much better than the Brooklyn Nets. So uh, yeah, this should be a battle. Oh, oh no. Uh, oh, this this wasn't a battle. This was a 30 point win for Toronto. Go, go Canada, I guess. Definitely a nice debut for Team Canada, they take over New York. Also, it's not like the Raptors Canada get Jokic. They do get Bam, though. We are officially into single digits, just nine teams, nine states, nine regions remaining. Oh, boy. Who are the Atlanta Hawks going to victimize next? This this could be trouble straight north. Because Atlanta owns so much space on the board, I could go a bunch of different directions. But from their logo right there, I'm going due north, right through South Carolina and John Morant into the Charlotte Hornets territory. We might as well get this heavyweight duel out of the way right now. Two ridiculously talented talented rosters competing for the entire southeast of the USA, also for John ja Moran. The Hawks became the first team to grab a foothold in this game in the third quarter, a near double-digit lead. But despite the addition of Joel Embiid, the Charlotte Hornets, they couldn't come back from that foothold Atlanta had. Yeah, it was more than that. And there's no doubt now the Hawks do own the southeast of the USA. They also grabbed John ja Morant, and I also changed Toronto's color to purple, just so we don't get confused. Atlanta would also receive the 11th free agent, which is Rudy Go Bear, very interesting. Adding to the crew with Ant Edwards, John ja Morant now, Jalen Brown. Man, that's a roster. The wheel would next give us the Milwaukee Bucks. The compass sent them southeast for a little rivalry battle with the Bulls. I almost forgot this is the debut of the Chicago Bulls. Anthony Davis, Fred Van Vliet, and some solid depth after that. And we got a clutch finish in coming. One point game, minute and a half left. Oh, that's a big rebound by Jalen Duran, the Milwaukee addition from a little while ago. Okay. AD going to work on the youngster. AD, bruh, he just got got boxed. What is happening? Chicago really needs AD to stop getting sunned by Duran right now and find a basket. Uh-oh, Fred Van Vliet, don't force it up. Fred, what are you doing? Oh my... Game.
over. What? He had 28 and 6. No chance the rest of his team sold the bread. That's tough, Chicago. Milwaukee overtakes Chicago. They will also take free agent number four. A guy by the name of Kristaps Porzingis. Not bad. And our wheel would send us back to Dallas, pushing them southeast, which is, yep, into Atlanta Hawks territory. And I'm putting up Austin Reeves for this matchup. The pride of Arkansas. I don't know why I just said it like that. Would the Mavericks be on task able to upset this mighty Hawks squad? Uh, nope. Uh, no, they wouldn't. Man, man, man. The Hawks, dude. Wow. In addition to acquiring that AR-15, the Hawks also get a whole lot of land territory. Only six teams remain. Where are we going next? The Hawks, who literally can't even get better. Any Ooh, the Bucks again. All right. Do the Bucks end up challenging the Hawks here? I think that might be what happens going east. Yeah, no matter where I would draw the arrow here. Yeah, the east uh, east of the Bucks is the Hawks. There you go. I'm not sure I've ever seen a consistently dominant team quite like these Atlanta Hawks. They're now 6-0 and and they haven't had a close game, have they? The Hawks have also been blessed by the wheel that they keep getting to play games to expand their territory. I mean, we haven't even seen Cleveland yet. Just five games remaining. The wheel wanted to see Atlanta continue to cook. The compass sent them north and I decided it was time for a Cleveland Cavaliers Atlanta Hawks matchup. They need to play a game here, the Cavs. Because if ever a team was going to pull off an upset of epic proportions, wouldn't it be the one with two all-time generational players, both born in Akron, Ohio? Let's go, Cleveland. Well, Police. um, I don't know what else to say. LeBron at 35, 7, and 8. Steph kind of disappointing. 22 points. This Cavs team has no big man. That's the problem. Oh, yeah. That's also the problem there. No perimeter. D bod John Morant, 53 points. Just four teams remain on our map now. Yeah, the Hawks. Um, yeah, yep. watch them get Jokic. I'm so scared they're gonna get Jokic too and just completely <laughs> It's not Jokic, but it's the free agent number two, Kyrie Irving, which, yeah, sure. It was only a matter of time. They keep winning games. If Steph and LeBron couldn't do it, is there anyone who will, I don't know, stop this hog? Yeah, right. The Trailblazers. The Trailblazers have to be careful here. They might end up playing the Hawks if they go oh, no east. No. Okay, thank goodness. All right, they were saved. They do get to go play the Lakers, which is good for either LA or Portland. Whoever wins, they get to boost their team a bit without having to face Atlanta yet. We've only seen the Blazers once, but remember they added Zach Levine and Laurie Markkinen, so they got a squad. And despite the Lakers having themselves a Giannis, this was still a really close game. Oh, Brooke Lopez inside. That's too easy. Come on, Portland. They need a bucket right here. Zach Levine, work it with Demonis. Oh, no, Zach. Don't force up something dumb. That was okay. Near turnover. What? How is that not a double dribble? Yo, Zach just cheated. For some reason, LA running through Klay Thompson. That was really, really dumb. You have James Harden and Giannis out there. That's really tough. Grab board. Zach grabs board. I saw it coming, man. Do we get OT or did the Lakers clutch up here? They're still going to Klay? Oh, man, Klay. Oh, man, Klay. That was so dumb. They have so many stuff. Why are you going to Klay Thompson? Well, I guess I should stop doubting the Lakers. Uh, Even though they fumbled the bag trying to force it to Klay Thompson at the end of regulation, they came out in OT and flooded. The Lakers survived against Portland. They've got the West Coast, but yeah, they're still up against it. Look at Atlanta. I can't believe the it. The one thing that could change this entire outcome is if this RNG spin lands on one for the Lakers to take Nikola Jokic. Okay, yeah, okay. It did. It did. Do the Hawks get a pass through to the final game of the video? Do uh, Toronto and LA... Who plays LA? Uh-oh. I think regardless of where this compass goes, my Canadian brothers in Toronto, I think, get a pass. Yup. Dude, Toronto played one game, right? One game, and they're going to be in the final. This is crazy. I'm going to leave Jason Tatum and Adam to a team before our final game. I will spin a wheel and we'll do it at random. But uh, yeah, this is just straight up Lakers Hawks. And these two teams, these two heavyweights are playing to a clutch finish. We're just over a minute left and LA brought it to within two. Oh, that's defense. Yep. Giannis was there enough. Both teams have, I think their best lineup out there. Harden. Harden. What a shot. Okay. We got the clutch shots back. Wow. Nah, this is serious. Jaw driving on. Yo Dude, Giannis. Nah, Jaw. Why would you try that? LA really might mess around and upset two in a row. Two in Arden. But Giannis is there. Wow. One more hoop and this game is literally over. Go up with it. Gian right? Giannis, go up. Oh, you, you bricked that. Oh, but he got the rebound. Oh, he bricked that too. But he got the rebound again. This game is so dumb. Unreal, dude. After that Steph LeBron blowout, I didn't think there was a team, a city that could touch Atlanta. But there you go. We did 
did know the Lakers were going to be a heavyweight right from the jump on this video and especially adding Giannis, but still it feels like a bit of an upset. Just a crazy turnaround, crazy result in this video. The Lakers take over all that Hawks real estate. And again, somehow the Raptors, the Canadians have escaped till this point, but now they got to play. It's the final baby. Before that though, the Lakers are due to free agent acquisition. Imagine if this is Yoke. Ooh, that came close. Number seven, Nick Claxton. Why not? It's an 84 for the Lakers. And because I put him on the board and we managed to avoid Missouri with any matchups, I think it's only right that we do give Jason Tatum to one of these teams, like I mentioned. So let's do it at random. Whatever this spin right here lands on, they get Jason Tatum and it is the Raptors. I I'm okay with that. I hope you guys are too. The LA Lakers into the finals led by Giannis, Harden, DeRozan, just an unbelievable crew from LA and a couple nice additions. And those Lakers from LA taking on the team from Toronto, Canada that we've seen in action once led by Shea. They added Bam. Of course, we gave him Jason Tatum and you know, it's a pretty good team. Even with the addition of Tatum, I think we can all agree these Canadians, these Toronto Raptors are the ultimate underdog in this final. Oh my gosh, but it's a close game. It's a four point game. The Raptors, the Canadians have the lead. Giannis inside. Oh, good kick. Lamelo wide open. Whoa, he hit a late. Ain't no way. Toronto did have a big lead at one point in this game. LA's come all the way back. Who can clutch it out? That shot from Lamelo was insane. That's actually a good look. Shade, that's a good look that you bricked. No, no. Somebody stop ball. Giannis gets fouled. Why is Tatum not on the floor? Okay, Tatum's back out there for Toronto. Thank goodness. They're down one now. No two for one here. Tatum, that's a clean look. Yeah. No, I could tell that was going to miss, but he didn't get the blessing like Lamelo. Bruh, they let Lamelo hit a really bad, was it early or late? Doesn't matter, but nah. Tatum doesn't get that same love though. Giannis hit both free throws, but the Raptors are still in this. They need a three. Kelly yeah. Olin. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly Olynyk, bro, I can't even be mad. Kelly's hit some big shots in his career. That is a tough pill to swallow for Toronto, who didn't have any super standout performances. They were right there, though. And the Lakers, led by their leader, James Harden. Very nice. Giannis, what a monster performance. Regardless of the roller coaster it took for them to get there in this entire video and that final game, it is the Los Angeles Lakers who end up the uncontested champion of NBA imperialism, hometown teams edition. And there you go, man. After the Lakers beat the Hawks. It was only a matter. We knew they would end up winning this whole thing because they were very good. Shouts to LA. Let me know if you were surprised by the result, what you thought of this video as a whole. Let me know if you enjoyed it down below.